Hey, welcome back. Now, while Brian's making some sparks on that bumper, I'm going to play with some sparks of my own. I've got an old harness here, and we can show you a couple of things that make you just want to get rid of one and start from scratch. Now, if I look through this thing, right off the bat, I can see this wire here is basically fatiguing. Now, what's worse than that is now I'm trying to flow all that current through just a couple of strands. Now, not too far away, I can see another one here. These guys are getting chafed. So all they got to do is bump up against a piece of metal, flow some current, and short out. Now you got big problems, quick. Now, electrons flow through one copper molecule after another, and if they're nice and clean and in a straight line, obviously in a wire, the electrons flow pretty well. Now, if you get some corrosion in there, those corrosion, those oxides, basically slow the flow of electrons, and the temperature goes up. So your wire's going to get hot. Well, a hot wire actually flows worse current than a cold wire. So as the heat goes up, there's more resistance in that wire. So it's a downward spiral. Now we've got an example here. It's a little over the top, but it shows you what happens when you start fraying and fatiguing wires. The gauge, effective gauge of that wire drops. So you're basically running a smaller gauge wire when you're planning on running something heavier. Now the same thing happens when you corrode the wire. The gauge, the gauge goes down, the resistance goes up, and it's harder to flow the current. So if I get my safety glasses on and I fire this guy up, you're gonna see that things go bad in a hurry. Now check out this wire here. It's gonna start heating up, it's flowing too much current. Now it's called letting the smoke out of the wire. You can see it's getting red hot in there and I'm gonna shut it off because I think you've seen my point. Using the wrong gauge wire, frayed wires, and corroded wires are all bad. You can start fires under the dash and the engine compartment or maybe even the back by the fuel tank. So best thing to do is just strip all that old wire out and start with something new. Now here's a great kit from American Auto Wire. It's their Builder Series 19. Now it's fantastic because all the fuses are already in here. They use a spring-loaded fuse connector so you get great connection to your fuses. And everything's factory crimped inside. So all you've got to do under that dash is run a couple of screws under this thing, mount it up in there, and everything flows out to where you need it. So you run a bundle to the engine compartment, one underneath the dash, and one to the back. Now it's great because all the wires are labeled. So it doesn't matter where you are on the harness, you know what you're doing. And the critical ones, some of these you know, highly loaded components, they go ahead and put the connectors on for you. They leave the wires a little bit long, so you know, if you want to use the factory connector, which is usually always better. Now it's got dimmer switches, you know, high beams, ignition switches, all the things that are critical to doing this thing right, especially in the highly loaded areas. Now you don't have to be a wiring genius. They give you great documentation. So you can just lay these things out with a little bit of patience, just follow color coding and these great labels that come on the full length of the wire. The next thing you know, your old ride will be up to date, new and safe and performing like it should.